Call the meeting to order, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to um, welcome uh, two guests here. I don't believe I uh, welcomed her the last time. Laura Botsford is uh, an intern with the uh, clerk of the legislature here. She's doing a lot of good work for us as legislators, trying to get some um, stuff electronically uh, uploaded and things of that nature. So welcome, Laura. She's also a, um, a criminal justice student at Cuyahoga Community College. So uh, looking to go on for public justice or political science, I believe, as soon as possible. So, here, here today, and Mel has a special guest with her at our meeting. Yes, I do. Gabrielle is my uh, granddaughter, and she wanted to come and see how everything is done. So I had to have them. Well, we, we, we welcome both of you here to this uh, meeting, and I would like to excuse uh, Legislator Klein as he has a uh, prior commitment and move right along to the approval of the minutes of January 26. Motion by Legislator Trudell, second by Legislator Chesbrough. Any additions, deletions, corrections? There are none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Opposed? Stands All right. Resolution 1 is a budget modification in 911 overtime. Um, Director Pooley has joined us here. I will let him uh, explain a little bit. This has to do with a uh, pro QA um, project that has begun and the need for some training, etc. So go ahead. Yes, I, I interrupt you. Um, there's no third answer in 26 minutes. I just took the second. You got your special meeting then? Yeah, special meeting on the third. June 3rd. Uh, agenda, June 3rd. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the end. Yeah. Then again, I oh, I missed the June 30th one. You know, so. yeah. Motion for the June 30th one by Legislator Castilla, it sounds like then, right? <laughs> Second by. Legislator Trudell, any additions, deletions, corrections? And not all in favor say aye. Aye. All right, back to uh, Director Poole. All right. Um, <laughs> so, at the uh, beginning of the year, we decided to make a uh, plan forward with a Pro QA project, which was a uh, going to take all of our emergency medical dispatch questions and all of the uh, processes and forms that we go through. Um, that right now is all manual. All of our people must be trained on how to actually navigate a uh, physical card set when uh, somebody's on the phone asking them and uh, calls for an hour and help on the side. So uh, this software and project in, in and of itself is um, something that's going to take the uh, manual process of going through the physical cards to a software-based format where it will actually drive them to the questions that will actually pop up from them. There's a couple of different applications that uh, um, assist with that. A uh, big one is uh, CPR. It actually walks them through the steps of training somebody over the phone how to do a performance CPR. And um, one of the first things we did was uh, began the project at a kickoff meeting and uh, it early identified that uh, we are currently EMD emergency medical dispatch certified, but we're certified to a different um, certification um, uh, company, I guess you'd call it, um, and the uh, industry standard is actually to go through uh, IE, the International Association of Emergency Dispatch, and uh, so we need to transition our EMD certification program from the one we're currently using over to this new IE, well it's not new, over to the industry standard IE, and um, to do that we need to send all of our personnel through Emergency Medical Dispatch Certification Training, which is a three-day course, which because we purchased the software will be held in Sweden County, but uh, three days of uh, putting all of our staff through that, as well as making sure that we have coverage and stuff uh, for the floor uh, from an Avenue Center during that time frame. So the certification itself is $350. It's actually a reduced cost. It's normally $325 a person, but uh, negotiated a lower price for that. Um, so we need $10,200 um, reallocated for that to cover the certifications. And then um, with overtime for during the training, it'll be uh, about uh, $17,200 during that time frame. 
And then also, because we are currently low staff, we will definitely need the uh, additional, well, not additional, but the $4,800 that had originally been requested in 2019 <coughs> last year. And we were able to um, so looking for a total of $22,000 worth of overtime and then $10,200 of the certifications for a total of $32,200, which um, through savings that we have in my salaries and wages because we've been short staffed uh, this year that uh, looking to relocate those from salaries and wages over to overtime and the uh, other travel expenses and overtime. <coughs> Motion by Legislator Kastler, second by Legislator Potter. Discussion. Legislator Chesler. Um, You say you're short staffed. Are you looking for people to fill those positions? We can't find them. We did hire. Um, the biggest problem was we didn't have a list. Well, we had a list to work off of, but uh, um, with the CAG change out and everything we were doing last year, we didn't have the time to do a four, uh, four month recruit training. So we did start one back in May. So hopefully in a, another couple of well, two to three months, we'll actually have uh, those five people that we hired on staff to actually be able to start helping us. But that's only going to be as call takers. In the meantime, I've lost two more um, full telecommunicators as well. So it's we're, we're gaining, but we're losing at the same amount of time. So it's kind of like treading water. Oh, let's say No, it's good. Go ahead, Where are we losing them? Lost uh, I lost one to corrections, which that's not normal, but I lost one to corrections and uh, one to be a stable mother. So, legislator can stay. Okay, uh, I'm just going to piggyback off both of them. Just how many are you short? I mean, because we, we always, everybody keeps saying, you know, a lot of department heads say, well, we're short staff, we're short staff. <coughs> but I don't think I've ever heard anybody ask a specific question. How many are, are you short staffed and in what areas are you short staffed in? We were five full time short telecommunicators, two part time. We did hire um, five full time. So those those people, once they get through the recruit academy, assuming they make it through recruit academy, um, so we'll still be short the two part times at that point. So you're going to be short two part time. Correct. After all this. Hopefully, as long as nobody else leaves and everybody makes now, it through recruit academy. Uh, now, to, to wash that, the $32,000 that you're going to take out of salaries and wages, that's going to come from one, is that one person? That, that's basically one person. It's actually taking everybody year to date. Um, it's it's almost maxing out what I had had for city. So, when those people could place, we didn't hire them back in May. So. That's it. Thank you. All right. Here you know in the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. Thank you very much. Sure you send the uh, budget line when it comes around. Um, next one up, um, are you picking this or? Uh, Rich, Rich, is uh, Rich is gone. Okay. So, um, resolution authorizing the chairman to enter into a retainer agreement with a law firm on behalf of uh, the county regarding uh, possible litigation against telecommunication companies and collections and payments and lien on surges, uh, surcharges. This has to, this is something that NISAC um, put out to us uh, and informed us about. You probably read it in your packet here. Um, <clears throat> Verizon owes the, um, like Nassau County owes, uh, Verizon owes some money. Um, they improperly deducted them out from 1 to 3 percent, the other 2 percent fee, administrative fee. Um, that's permitted by law. Um, E911's surcharge revenue for um, eight communications carriers uh, totaled uh, 85 grand that was not accrued in 2014 at the end of the year. Um, and most communication service providers were not providing the county with the annual accountings of the surcharge amount <coughs> billed and collected um, with the names and addresses of customers who have refused or failed to pay the surcharge. Um, as is required in county law. Um, Kevin, do you have anything else you want to add? To um, I know this is something that there's, there's a lot of gray area to it because they've been trying to get a good handle on who is actually collecting what as far as not one surcharges. And that's where, um, I mean, this is going after the actual telecommunications companies, 
but that's been a lot of our struggles in New York State with trying to get the diversion of the funds to funnel because they there's no upfront and transparent reporting on what they're actually collecting. Um, so that's where a lot of this is, is being driven because some people have actually started to see companies that are drilling and start doing their own math and figuring that out, and that's where uh, that's where this comes from. So um, Rich and I had spoke on this, and he thinks that uh, we'll be able to pull some information and uh, be able to try and you know, help open that up a little bit more. So. So th this has a potential um, putting us in this litigation to go after uh, Verizon, AT&T, Time Warner, and Frontier, um, just to name the four main ones for our area. So they fail to do this kind of stuff. I'll entertain a motion to um, allow for the uh, entering into this litigation. Cost is uh, none. <laughs> it's none. Uh, Legislator Cancer makes a motion. Legislator Chesbro, no questions. Um, basically, then, this is just it only happen if we find the money that is owed us that they would they would go after them, and then we would get money, and the law firm takes on all the expenses, and if they bring in money, then they just get a fee, but we would get the rest. They get like twenty five percent of whatever they find out there. Is that what I'm? I'm trying to get to the number. No grace, yes. but, but basically, they go. It doesn't cost us anything. The only option is yeah, we can does. make money. <clears throat> we can get money, I should say. I'm sorry, but it, it does cost us money because it's 25 percent of the money that we should have gotten anyways. So I mean, I understand what you're saying. You know, we don't have to put anything up front, right? But we're still losing 25 percent. So that's what my question is going to be: is why isn't the state doing this? Instead of you know us having to hire you know a law firm to go and get and we lose twenty five percent we should be getting a hundred percent. That's my only complaint. I'm, you know I'm going to be in favor of the resolution, but what I'm saying is you know again New York State okay again is sticking it to us on the nine one one. They're keeping you know so much of it as it is they keep almost three quarters of it don't they? Yes. All right. We get no we have to apply as a grant to get our portion back. You know, we, we get we get duly doing now again so we've got to go after people that are collecting money, it's supposed to be coming to us, and it's not, it's gonna cost us twenty five percent of what they collected. So, 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 so yeah, to, I agree to, with I agree with the right. resolution. Right. Okay. To, to not be labor, but on the flip side of this, yeah, New York State should really probably be doing this. But on the other side, if we had to send out Rich or his department to do it, well, it would cost us that 25% because, well, he's not focusing on something else and I know we're already paying the salary, but, you know, that's what you're saying. So I guess I have to agree. Do you want me to, you want me to, to <coughs> jump on if, if we send Rich or his out to do it? In that sense that there's a lot of times that I've been said, well, we're having people do that, but, well, we got to pay him anyway, so, you know, they're doing something that's going to get us some money. I mean, I would rather us not have to do anything. Right. Stay that, aware. I guess that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Stands approved. Let's go into. Uh, are you done, Kevin? You want to, why don't we do your report while we're reading here? I don't have it printed out for everybody, but I did get it finished just because today being the first, I didn't get the rest of the numbers till uh, this morning. But um, I can throw some stuff out there for you guys. Um, we actually had a very, very busy month, which is why I wanted to make sure I got the numbers just straight. But uh, uh, we had 1,482 911 calls, 4,455 wireless calls, which is up almost 1,200 calls over our average. Um, and that was largely because a lot of the, uh, we had some pretty decent uh, rain and wind events over the past, uh, past month. Had some, had some busy, busy times, that's for sure. Um, also, with the weather warming up, people tend to get a little bit more excited and like to take it out on each other for some, some one reason or another as well. So, uh, but uh, we, we did see a pretty good increase this past month. Um, along that, with that though, with the, um, you know, I should keep shorthanded, as I've mentioned already, our uh, emergency calls answered within 10 seconds did drop down a bit um, to uh, 
80.09%, which we'd like to be up at. It's supposed to be above 90, but uh, as we spoke about before, that directly correlates with our um, staffing levels. So could we keep those being low? That's the reason why. Um, I mentioned we started our ProQA project, so uh, we spent some uh, considerable time this past month working on that, as well as uh, starting to work on our summer events in the uh, interoperability communications plans for Harborfest and Virgin Fireworks, which are coming up in the next few days here. Um, also did uh, quite a bit of work on uh, preparing for the active shooter um, exercise that's going on starting today at St. Mary Schools that uh, the Sheriff's Office is doing. So. Um, spent a lot of time working with them on uh, getting communications set up and uh, talking about an active shooter incident and how we would set up communications for that. So that's about the highlights. Questions for Kevin? All right, going right along, let's go back in, jump into the uh, agenda. We'll start on uh, sign council. She actually had to be in court this morning. She gave a great report to uh, government courts where she would normally report to. Um, the only reason I wanted to bring her in is because the CAP Court centralized arraignment program. Um, some of you are aware, some of you are not. Um, this is a program where we're going to arraign all of our, um, um, I guess, uh, arrested individuals at the uh, Public Safety Center starting very soon. It's a result of a uh, court case uh, we have run in the reason that it would report to this committee is because the sheriff's department are going to have to babysit the uh, individuals who are waiting for um, and we're going to have an expense there to pay for those individuals. There is a slight expense for um, renovating two holding cells that are outside of our county court uh, facility um, so that we can, we have 20 people, we can accommodate that many people in those holding cells. Um, so there's more to come on this. Sarah will give us another update in August. The plan has been written. They're going back and forth on a couple parts of it. Um, and just so you know, in your towns, um, the cities are a little separate. The cities will uh, be doing the arraignments um, in the morning time and throughout the day if they're able to. The town uh, judges, justices, will be able to um, come to the uh, seven days a week. This is one of them will be coming to the uh, Public Safety Center to arraign, an in, you know, the individuals. Um, they'll be paid two hundred and fifty dollars a day to do this. That will not be our expense. <laughs> it will be the Office of Court Administration. It won't be county expense, I should say. So um, that's kind of the nutshell of what's going on right now. Uh, there will be more to come and a more elaborate report. The only reason I really want to bring it to you is the sheriff's involvement with this uh, program. It's going to cost us. And, and to go along with it, we don't know the full um, cost because they are um, still dealing with cashless bail and things of that nature that are going to play out. How many people actually get arrested and have to be arraigned and held and all that. So, um, more to come. Um, going along to EMO and EMS. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, obviously, uh, we continue to be very busy with Lake Ontario flooding. Uh, we still have a state of emergency in effect here in the county, and I would expect we will for some time until the water starts to recede. Uh, right now, the lake appears to be staying rather static and not continuing to rise. Uh, latest projection, if I remember correctly, is either uh, going down four inches or six inches by mid July. We should have an update on that. Uh, this afternoon, but irrespective, when we're, I think, 39 inches high, 4 inches, we have a long way to go to get that down to something uh, that resembles average. Um, where we really take a hit is when we get a storm with wind out of the west or the northwest, and then our phones tend to take off again. So pray for winds out of the south or out of the east, send it to Canada. Um, uh, many of the assessments, and I think we've had 60 of them done here in Oswego County by New York State. Uh, many of them now, or there's a great many that have been tagged for that they need long-term mitigation assistance. So 
that would be things like break walls and such to help them, sandbags and that type of thing just aren't going to help them out at all. Uh, New York State resources are cutting back. They're no longer running extended hours in Albany or weekends, so um, that'll have some some level of impact because they're going to run their normal work day for Monday through Friday unless something major happens. So uh, we'll, we'll be into the flood issues for months to come. Um, the uh, nuclear, I'll jump ahead, item that's not on here, but um, we've talked about it several months in preparation for the uh, FEMA radiological exercise. We had that on Tuesday. Uh, <coughs> Several hundred people involved from the plants, from Exxon corporate, county, local, state, federal agencies. And in the end, uh, FEMA and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, came out and said they have reasonable assurance that the, that the plants and the community can protect the public. So that was good. Um, I got an email this morning with thanks and an attaboy, if you will, from Exxon Corporate. So that's always a plus since they fund all that. So that was a major accomplishment. Our next FEMA graded exercise will be in September for our um, personnel monitoring center. And then item three, uh, AMO hosted a Coast Guard Area Maritime Security <coughs> meeting. These are uh, not only government representatives, but also uh, corporate folks, uh, facilities here in the harbor that have are required to have federal security plans, etc. And it was the first time we were able to take advantage of our uh, distance technology, if you will. So we had one speaker here in Oswego, two in Rochester, and we had people going to the meeting. Uh, in Rochester and Alex Bay and Oswego because the area is from Messina to Rochester, so no matter where we would hold them in the past, uh, it was a long drive for somebody and our attendance was up significantly. So that was a, a major plus using modern technology. That's all I have for Renee. Just to tag on to Director Courier's information about the flooding, I, I was able to pull before this meeting the daily update from our state representative on where we're at. We do have um, 72 properties that have been tagged for long-term mitigation. We have eight uh, assessments in process and four missions occurring today in the county. Um, as far as EMS, uh, I did have the opportunity to participate in the webinar for the Healthcare Coalition um, Critical Partners with Emergency Managers. Uh, that was really informative. In, in the event that something really bad happens in our county or we have like a, a critical infrastructure fail and, and we need to look at evacuating some of our special facilities, um, it's going to take a, a much larger group of individuals to make that happen. So it's nice to know that there are <coughs> people in place, such as a healthcare coalition that can help us in the event that we need them. So uh, I did bring that to our EMS partners and looking at um, their familiarity with that organization as well. And hopefully we'll be able to orient our EMS agencies, how they might fit into that overarching network um, of people who are going to need to team together if something bad happens in an area. The other webinar that I got to participate in was the countywide support for EMS systems. This actually, I thought it was going to be Essex County, but it wasn't. It was Columbia County. So that set of PowerPoint slides and the webinar recording are available on the NYSEC website. So you can go in and check that out. You know, I think uh, I'm glad they're providing some information on different systems that counties are using. In reality, if we came to that point in in Oswego County where we need to look at something for this county, none of these are plug and play. Um, you know, they're very tailored to fit their needs. So we, but it's nice to have resources available to look at some of the options that other counties are trying. And if I can add one, one piece to the item one 
when he said if we had a major infrastructure failure, at times we get, we get very close to having some of those incidents that don't make the newspaper. Um, and we had the rainstorm two weeks ago um, here in town where we got the deluge. We were literally that much water away, rise of that much water inside the city water facility, water treatment facility, or water pumping facility from the city losing their water supply, which would have very short order put us into a situation of trying to evacuate the hospital, nursing homes, etc. So uh, these things do occur even though when we get close, even though the public may not see it in the paper the next day. Any questions? Right along. Right, get Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> you pretty much um, standard. Uh, we're up to truck fires here to date. Um, 50 or 80 plus calls for activations for coordinators um, through this report. A few more this week. But um, we just started a uh, depot class. That class will run through November. Uh, then you see this listed of a bunch of initials, but a lot more training classes we have coming up that we're working on scheduling. Um, what we're trying to work on right now is put together another pump ops class, a water supply class, and then take the trainees from those classes and put them into an exercise and train on the um, tanker task force and the home trailer. So put it all together into a large, couple large exercises in a couple different spots in the county to test them. Um, continue working with EMS on stop and leave training classes. Um, just one, I think I would call it a milestone. Uh, we started with the sheriff's department today doing the um, rescue task force training at Sandy Creek School. Um, the sheriff's department is doing law enforcement training during the day, all day today. And then the second part of that class will be tomorrow night, which involves law enforcement, fire, EMS, and actually going through doing hands-on for active shooter in schools, going through um, the whole scenario. He's got actors coming in. They'll be playing the parts of victims and, and They'll be playing parts of the shooter and all that sort of stuff. Um, the dates are listed on here, but that's scheduled through the whole month. Um, so if you look at the dates I put in here, like today, July 1st, and then the second date, July 2nd. So the daytime, the first date is a daytime date for law enforcement only. The second date is an evening, and it starts at 4 in the afternoon, goes till midnight for the actual hands on and, and scenario part. And that's See, there's several dates out through the end of the month. Um, so I think we've got so far good interest, um, pretty decent signups. Um, I think Mike was up there this morning, on it. I think he said there's um, 15 or 16 from law enforcement there today for the first day. So uh, hoping that's going to go well and that will give us the training aspect, it'll give us a little more insight to how much more training we need to do, what else we need to do. To, Work the bugs out of it, which I'm sure there will be when you get that many agencies working together. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. Granted, in some of the meetings there were questions came up that as we do this, we need to answer those questions. So, I think it's a big, big step. Um, so the second page just listed a bunch of activities for June. Um, we had three people from the county go to the Hazmat International Conference in Baltimore, um, two of the deputy coordinators and for the city fire chief. Brought back a lot of good uh, information, training material. Uh, we're working with the sheriff and the jail uh, corrections people on their uh, emergency plan and evacuation. We have another meeting coming up I think it's next week. Um, Started Harbor Fest meetings, as Kevin mentioned, Birth and Fireworks. Um, we'll be supporting that. It's Wednesday night, right? Fireworks are. 
Um, a couple of the others, just all the flooding, but um, Dale mentioned the city of Oswego had a little problem with possibly losing city water. We also had 80 plus calls that day from rescuing uh, a couple people out of a vehicle because they drove around the barricades, didn't think the water was that deep, and when it started running on the windows of their Jeep, they thought, uh oh, we're in trouble. Um, which tied up the city for, but uh, they, they had to put their um, inflatable boat in, put guys in, in um, dry suits, not dry suits, but water rescue suits, because one of the issues is somebody questioned one day, saw the pictures of, well, why are they in those suits? If anybody could have seen the rain that day, it was blowing manhole covers off and storm water was coming up in the street. So if they're walking in there to go rescue this person, they don't know that manhole cover's not there. That can be a rude awakening in a hurry. So they, they prep for the worst. Um, you know, they said, well, why didn't they, people just jump out of the vehicle and walk? The water wasn't that deep. Well, one of the firemen was up to here. I was one of the shorter firemen. But still, um, you know, it can be an issue. And there was a six year old girl. And there was a six year old girl and, and the mother. Yep. Um, Oswego Town had 30 plus calls that day. They were actually the first ones to start out. Um, and just would like to thank Dale. Um, I got a phone call from the Swiggle Towns, the fire chief, about the Rice Creek Dam and the amount of water going over it and the potential issues. And I said, hmm, okay, I'm not sure who we should notify. So I called Dale. And after that, Dale took care of it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, he kept me posted. I got a couple phone calls, but I was not there all night. Um, Another dam. <laughs> as, as soon as the state found out that the state owned it, oh, there were a lot of people there. Um, but all came out good. Um, but with that being said, though, while we had it in county control, I was there on the scene with a few other legislators that represent that area, and I even commend all of our county departments, from the sheriff's department down to Dale, down to the fire coordinator's office, for the whole uh, response that you did get. Yeah, you know, so you did a great job up until 11 o'clock when Dale was breathing much easier when it wasn't his issue anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was still getting calls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was still mind about the next day. Okay. Yeah. State, state took a, took a big uh, step forward on that. Okay. Yeah. So has has been a rather uh, busy month. Yeah. 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 Situations, making sure that roads are passable, letting us know if there any are, are any issues um, for access in any of the areas. So um, they put a lot of miles on for us, checking different areas and staying in communication with us. It's been a, a great help. Okay. Well, and the Phoenix Dam thing is all taken care of, right? Yep. Yeah, everything is good. Yep. That was a. Uh... <clears throat> More precautionary than another damage here. More mm -hmm. precautionary than, um, you know, yes, if something had happened, it could have been worse than what it was, but they got it taken care of rather quickly. Uh, I mean, they're still doing repairs, but right. they got but it to a point where it's. It's always great when the county minister calls and says, this is not a drill. Yeah. Oh, God. And then he says, not nuclear, and that makes me think. Legislative test. Thank you. Uh, I Done. On the, uh, the schooling at Fayette Creek, the first day you say each of those first days is for the sheriff. For law enforcement. Uh, yeah. law, law enforcement. Okay. So the second day, now that would be the teachers or whoever else that needs to go to these classes and other people on the second day of each of this. So the second day is law enforcement, fire, and EMS. Okay. So is any of the teachers being. This not, is not in this part. Okay. This is not. Well, this first responders. This is trained for first responders. Okay. Okay. I don't know whether they had, uh, you know, stop the bleeding type thing. They... We did something similar to this in the um, Costantia, Cleveland area last year. We used their facility for our training. Yep. So there, there was a request to have some more in the northern part of the I county know. this year, so okay. that so there could be some more easily accessible access it's to the training. Be training for the teachers and or maybe even seniors in high school on the stop the bleeding thing yes. that's up to the school district okay so the school district um has the how many districts have been been trained so far overnight you have numbers on that 
Um, four that I have been in, but Oswego City has helped with some um, Central Square, Central Square's school resource officer. There are some additional people who can do training. So um, four that I've been in. The one that I've seen the most widespread training is for Mexico. Sandy Creek is looking at their November um, superintendent's conference day. So some of them are looking at some upcoming training days this year. And that's part of the uh, CSI committee has subcommittees and there is a section for schools that are addressing that piece of it. We have a subcommittee that's addressing the first responder piece. Of it. Well, what what is going to come up for the next point of is our standard response protocol, right. which will be given to the school teachers, administrators, and school workers. So this piece right now is primarily this tactical training for first responders, the law enforcement today, and then the combination of law enforcement and fire emergency responders on the second thing. So if the answer your question directly, then I think we can jump in. But the standard response protocol is what we'll be implementing for all the schools, which is when they go into the school, are some of the students going to be trained also, like juniors and seniors? All of those students will be trained All of at a certain level on what to expect, but that's that's the standard response protocol, right? That's separate from this is tactical, this is for yeah. generally professionals who are going in, or volunteers, professionals and volunteers. It's like when they started off the fire drills back in the day, you know, it's similar to training. Well, in fire drills, the older kids help take care of the younger kids to get them out of the school. At least in my school, because they're all in one building anyway. So, the juniors and seniors help the, the older kids up, up the door and watch them so they really get. During the one room school on stage. Ah, uh, well, no. <laughs> oh, okay. We only had a one or two doors to get out of the so, yeah. Um, Stop the okay. training is up to the school district. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just question, when you're having the, the training, is that the resource officers also being trained? Yes. yes. They can be, yes. They that can that be. was our urgency in doing the hiring and all of that, and every year at that special meeting. Well, so they could be in place. So they could be in place for this. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, moving along from that then, we're going to go to probation. Um, as far as we raise the age, uh, our contract has been signed, approved and signed with ECPS, so we can start a reimbursement, you know, we're submitting for reimbursement. Um, the, our part of it is roughly 146000 is our uh, grant amount. However, most of that is for salaries to hire a probation officer and a probation assistant, which at this point, I'm not inclined to really do that, um, because the numbers have not come to anywhere near what we thought they were going to be. And from what the state's saying is after this contract, which expires in March of next year, they're going to start reimbursing more based on numbers. So my concern is that they're going to look at those numbers. Our numbers aren't there. So they could end up cutting our reimbursement at that point, which means the county would end up making more costs in those positions. So I'm waiting until we see what happens with our first first when the 17 year olds come into play. They're saying that's going to really jump our numbers. But they said that about 16 year olds, too. So we have to wait and see how the numbers go. Like I said, I'm concerned about hiring because what's going to happen is then the reimbursement's going to stop. So some of the reimbursement's going to be for past training and stuff that we've already done, so I can submit that. So we can well, I, I appreciate it. I, I think most of the committee would agree to that. I appreciate you holding off on the hiring. If we don't need it right now, we're still able to function as the you know department is able to function at a decent level. I mean, that's sort of reallocated a little bit in house. Coming forward, so it's working okay. Yep. Um, as far as the CBI grant, we've graduated 10 inmates so far from the program. Um, they've got a class scheduled to start next Monday. Um, I think they've got 11 people scheduled to start that group. Um, ECGS came in to take a slight visit of the grant, and everything went well with that. Um, we're having a little trouble spending down all of the money, which is kind of odd, but so they're telling us that we're going to actually be able to start another type of program, another evidence based program, along with what we're running now to kind of use up that money. So that'll be good. We've got people trained in house to do that. So we may end up running more groups in the jail than we're doing now. Mm -hmm. so, so, well, any 
questions for David? Oh, go ahead. No, well, I was going to ask, it wasn't really him. I just wanted to know if the um, medical part, mental and medical part, is being started in the jail. But it should have been from the chair. <laughs> That's on my list to address where we're at with it. We can do it now or? Yeah, yeah you're next on our list, so we can run along and go right into the chairs. Yeah. Top of my list was just uh, after all of our asking for changes in medical, we've actually met on Friday with actually a physician's assistant who is going to take the nurse practitioner spot, so probably a little more qualified than we thought, but she's going to work out very well, we think. We offered her a job on Friday. We also met with one nurse who is the only one we have responding to our ad at this point, and we offered her a job this morning and she accepted. So we have two more nursing positions left to fill that we're actively or aggressively going after the people that put applications in because they're not calling us back. So we're trying to find out if they take employment somewhere else or if they're just not getting our messages. So hopefully that will Is that happen. consistent like pulling them over and asking? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got there yet, but it's on the list. Um, no, we've sent emails and phone calls and they just haven't been calling us back. So I told Kim, just keep calling them every day until we get somebody because we have an issue. The LPN and the RPN that are there both have some days off that they have to take, I think, next week or the week after. So I'm hoping to get proper coverage for those days. And we also did hire the social worker for the mental health. So we met with the doctor on Friday and everything. Even though we were asking for a lot of stuff before, we're just getting to the point where we're hiring, but it's moving in, I think, a very good direction. Um, he's happy with the progress we're making so far, so I think, uh, things are moving along well there. Uh, aside from that, our only other issue is just we have a lot of training, a lot of things going on, so we're trying to make sure we have coverage just in corrections and on the road. Uh, we have the active shooter, which I'm going to talk about because I think we've discussed that pretty good. We did have a emergency service unit call out uh, Saturday night at 11 o'clock in Palermo. A gentleman had a gun, threatened to take his own life, ran into the woods. Um, we spent about five hours on that. Um, again, it was a call out with all the ESU and the negotiators. It ended successfully. He locked himself up to the road, gave himself up, and was taken for treatment. <coughs> I think that's all I got on the list. Out today? Oh, we house out every day, unfortunately. Uh, usually about five or six. I didn't see this morning's list, but it's usually about five or six. Better than 25 some days we have. <laughs> so. All right. At the zero, but we're working on it. Anything for the undershare? All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by the legislator Castilla, second by legislator Trudell. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Thank you.